What's going on? It's Phil from Earth Nails and Tails, and today I'm going to show you how to turn this drum into a rain barrel that you can use to collect water for your farm animals or your garden. Before we get into actually assembling the barrel itself, let's talk about everything that we need in order to finish the whole assembly and start collecting our 55 gallons worth of rainwater. And the most important thing that we need, obviously, is the barrel itself. And I found this on Facebook Marketplace. I found all of my rain barrels on Facebook Marketplace. It's a great place in order to find 55 gallon drums like this. And when I'm looking for the drum that I need, I'm looking for a few key things. Make sure that your drum is or has been used for something that you can easily clean out. Most of the drums that I find are typically filled with sugar or syrup. So just rinsing it out with some tap water makes it really easy to clean and then you're ready for your rainwater. You don't want to make sure it has any harmful chemicals in it in the past. It's going to be much harder to clean or you're just going to have to flush the barrel out many, many times before you can deem it safe. Now, I'm not drinking this water at all. I'm strictly using this water to water my garden or to feed to my chickens. So you can kind of play with those details a little bit there and figure out what works well for you. But for me, I'm going to look for something that typically has some sort of sugar or syrup in it just to play it safe. Additionally, I look for a barrel that has these two ports. So typically, or the way that our barrel is gonna be assembled is that this is going to be the bottom and this is going to be the top of our rain barrel. So these ports are very important. This is a vent port right here. And this is the access port. And we're actually going to utilize this access port to be the supply for our rain barrel like you previously saw. So looking for those few key features in your barrel is gonna make the whole process so much easier. Next, let's talk about the tools. And we may or may not use everything here. I know it might seem like a lot, but this is everything that I'm going to use in order to make this build as efficient as possible. We're gonna be dr drilling some holes in the side of our rain barrel. So I like to use a hole saw, but some other options that you have is a hand saw like this or just a simple X-Acto knife. This one is obviously gonna be the hardest to use. I would highly recommend the hole saw. It's gonna make a 15 minute job, a three second job. We need our PVC cement. At the end of the day, this is going to be a pressurized portion. It's actually gonna hold back the water. So we need to PVC this or cement the PVC together that we're going to use in order for it to hold back that water. Anytime I have a threaded connection, which we're gonna have at the top here, making sure you're using this PVC tape or this um, pipe thread. We have a filter that's going to be at the top of a rain barrel, which is going to one, filter all the rainwater that's coming through and also prevent any bugs or anything from coming into the rain barrel, which you don't want mosquitoes harboring their nests inside of your rain barrel. I've got some more drill bits, which we're going to use in order to drill a hole in the top here. I've got a screwdriver in order to take this vent port off, as well as my hammer. And then I've got a pencil or a permanent marker in order to make the precise measurements that we need to make all of our cuts. Moving on to the materials that we need, I've got a few different variations here. Now you can get a two inch or a two foot piece of PVC, which is gonna be more than enough what you need for this project. It's gonna be three quarter inch PVC. If you have some laying around, go grab that. You're probably gonna use about half of this. This costs usually about three bucks at the big box store, or they sell them in 10 foot pieces, which is about $6. So if you wanna make multiple rain barrels or you're doing other projects, it might be worth it for you to have a larger piece. Along with our three quarter inch PVC, we're going to need some fittings. And at a minimum, you're gonna need two of these threaded pieces, a couple elbows, and a three quarter inch valve, which is allow going to allow you to you know, isolate the water back. And then when you need it, you'll open that valve to supply the water. Some additional things you may need or may choose to use is I'm going to be using a T uh, because I'm gonna be connecting multiple rain barrels together. So basically this will allow me to have the T that comes out the bottom. I'll have my supply valve here and then I'll be able to branch off to other rain barrels. If you're not going to have multiple rain barrels, you'll just throw an elbow at the bottom with your valve coming out and then you're all set. Let's say for example, coming back to our rain barrel over here, 
If you find a barrel that has this vent port taken off and it's exposed, you can get a two inch threaded cap that I have here and that will screw right into that hole and seal, seal up that hole there for you. So if you find a rain barrel like that, don't be discouraged. You can get something that will finish it up for you. Lastly, on previous designs, every single one of your rain barrels is going to have an overflow where once your rain barrel fills up, any additional water that flows into your rain barrel is gonna flow out preventing it from overfilling your rain barrel. I had one of my rain barrels on a very large roof and it was capturing a lot of water. And for that reason, I decided to up the size tubing that I was using for my overflow in order to handle the amount of water that's coming in. Now, don't overthink this. You can use your three quarter inch PVC just like you have. If you have a smaller roof, this will be absolutely fine. But if you have a larger roof, you may want to consider getting some bigger pieces of PVC. So to make the overflow, you simply need another larger piece of PVC, which you're going to cut into one small piece, an elbow and a threaded fitting. And we're going to go over how to make the overflow in this video. I'm just giving you this option right up front, just in case you know ahead of time or after watching this video, you, that you'll need to collect these pieces in order to get started. Next thing that we need to consider before assembly is where we're going to be placing our rain barrel. And I've got a makeshift setup already here because I'm using this rain barrel to replace an old rain barrel that I had for my chickens. And this is what we've been using to provide water to our chickens off of our chickens runs roof right here. So I just set up a simple gutter and it collects all the water into my rain barrel. The reason why you need to understand your location is because it might add a few additional materials. I have a flexible downspout here. I have a couple cinder blocks. And we also need to consider the orientation in which the rain barrel is going to be facing in order to properly make our cuts. So again, this port right here is going to be where the water is supplied from the rain barrel. And it's actually gonna be at the bottom. So I've got my cinder blocks set up. Make sure you take the time to make sure this is level so that way you can capture as much rainwater as possible. But at the end of the day, it's going to be sitting on top of these cinder blocks like this. So I've got my access port right here. I'm gonna be having the valve stick out, which is actually going to supply you with the water. So as you can see, you need to make sure that this is a proper placement for you. What are your needs? What are your desires? So if I need to come in here and fill a rain, a watering can or something, is this valve gonna be high enough for the watering can to go underneath? Do I need an additional hose? If I bring this up a little bit higher, it's gonna be a lot easier to use and there's gonna be greater water pressure. Also me lining this up, now I understand where I need to cut my hole in the top in order to have a place for the water to flow into the rain barrel itself. So understanding the location that you're going to be putting your rain barrel in is equally as important as assembling the whole rain barrel itself. All right, so we've got our barrel, we've got our tools, we've got our materials, we understand our location. Now it's time to finally assemble the barrel. The first thing that I'm going to do is pop this seal on this vent port right here because I haven't done anything to this rain barrel yet. So you're getting the full experience as if you're buying a new barrel. So I just take my flathead screwdriver, my regular screwdriver, and I'm just gonna give it a few light taps. And that's gonna get that port to come right off. Ooh, I could smell, it smells like Gatorade or Mountain Dew, I don't know. But look in there, so you can see the sugar in the bottom there. So we wanna rinse all of that out. Opening this port is gonna make it a lot easier to clean. We're also gonna be drilling some holes in here. So I'm gonna put this aside for now. And then we're going to flip our rain barrel over. I know that I want my hole on the top where the water is going to flow in on kind of like a flat portion of the barrel here. So I have my filter that I'm gonna be using in order to filter the rainwater, as I said before. And I wanna find where it fits best at the approximate location. So honestly, I think somewhere along here on this ridge, giving a little bit room is probably the best spot for this. So I'm just gonna line this up here and then I'm gonna take my pencil and make sure you measure twice and cut once because you can't remake these cuts. 
So I'm gonna get as close as I can. Actually, I think I'm gonna go right here based off of like where my port is on the bottom. And I'm just gonna draw this, making this circle here, which is gonna look just like that to meet this. And the nice thing about this filter here, it has a little ridge on it. So this will actually be able to sit and hold itself on the rain barrel. And what I'm going to do is take my drill and get the biggest drill bit that you have because it's gonna make it easier. This is a half inch drill bit. And I'm gonna drill a hole right on the edge of the line here. Just like that. You can see how having the right tools makes the job easier. I'm gonna do two holes, maybe three. Because I'm doing this as a relief cut in order to fit my handsaw in there. So now I have enough room and we're just going to go around this whole hole and make a cut. All right. So that's a rough cut hole. If you had a jigsaw, it would make this job even easier, but we got it done. So before I go further, I'm going to take my filter and I'm going to clean up this hole a little bit more got sandpaper or you can just take the back end of the saw here and get off all of those fine pieces and I'm just gonna make sure that this fits in here so my hole needs to be a little bit larger in order for this to fit but we can clean this up a little bit more and then we'll go on to the next step so now we're going to rinse out our barrel and again depending on what type of material was inside this I've got sugar so if I leave a little bit in there it'll probably be okay we might get a little bit of biological growth in there, but that's really not that big a deal because we're gonna take some precautions later on for that. But we're just gonna take our hose and however long it takes to get all this stuff out is however long it takes. So let's get this done. All right, we've got everything rinsed out. And it's important to get all of those cutting scraps out too. And don't leave them on your lawn. You don't want your kids or your animals, whatever, get into that. Now, We've got our barrel, hole in the top, hole in the bottom, which is now really the top. So now we're gonna get this vent port ready in order to be our supply where the water comes out for the system. So this is our cap that we have right here. What I'm going to do is if you can look really closely in here, you can see those threads. So what I wanna do is cut out this plastic here and then that will allow us to screw our threaded fitting into here, just like that. And now we have a port where the water is going to come out. What I'm going to do is use my X-Acto knife and we're just gonna ever so slightly come in through here and we're just gonna make little puncture holes like this all the way around or through the middle, which is why we made this relief cut. It's just gonna make it easier to cut around this all the way around this here like that this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but the cleaner the hole is the less debris that will get stuck in here so then we have this now i'm just going to go ahead and clean up this hole a little bit more make sure you're not messing with the threads though you don't want to cut the threads because that's what that threaded pvc piece is going to thread into all right so now we have our hole so now we could take our piece of, again, three quarter inch PVC, and that's gonna screw right into there. Now, before we finalize any of our connections, before I put any thread lock or thread tape or use the cement, I wanna dry fit the whole system together, which basically means put it together, cut all the pieces, put it together without using the tape or the cement and make sure it works before you cement it together and then we'll finalize everything. So we screw, screw that back into its port and now we're going to make the supply assembly. We've got our water that's coming in the top of the tank up here and then we've got our supply which is down here. Imagine this is sitting on cinder blocks. So now what we need to do is cut a small piece of PVC because the way PVC works is that the PVC will slide into the different types of connections. So when you make your PVC cuts, you always wanna make sure you cut extra 
So that way you're making up for the amount of PVC that's going into the fitting like so. So I have this PVC that's gonna go into these two threaded fittings. So it's gonna go in this much. I need to make sure that it's at least twice this deep. So we'll make it about as long as my pointer finger here just to be safe. And notice I'm just using that as my measurement. And then I'm going to grab what is called a miter saw, which we have right here. And I'm going to just mark it. And this PVC has letters on it too. So I'm gonna be cutting it right after this L. So make sure you make a few cuts, just pull the saw back, let the saw do the work just to get a good notch. And we're gonna make this cut. All right. So anytime you make a cut, you're gonna have these little like snowflakes, PVC snowflakes that come off. Make sure you really clean that up because when you use the cement, the cement isn't gonna bind if the connection is dirty. So all this is gonna to have to be clean and free of debris before you can make those final connections. But now what I have is this piece right here, and I'm going to use this to attach it to my elbow like that. And then this is going to go underneath like that. So now I need to cut one more piece right here for my valve to attach to. So I cut the second piece for the valve. So I'm just going to place it inside the valve here. And then this is going to go in the elbow. And there's our supply, simple as that. A couple cuts and we're ready to go. Now, if you wanted to, let's say tie a hose onto here, um, they do make some of these valves that have threaded connections on the inside. So be on the lookout for that. Or you can get another one of these three quarter inch threaded fittings, cut another piece of PVC, and then that will fit on there just like this. So you can supply a hose. So another thing that you can add on if you desire. Now that we've got this set up, we're going to cut out the overflow. And again, the importance of the overflow is so that way your rain barrel doesn't overflow. Eventually your rain barrel is going to become full. And instead of the water coming gushing out of the top uncontrollably, we're going to make another cut where we will have a threaded connection tie in and a elbow come off of that and then it will flow down the rain barrel. So instead of me making these cuts and these connections, I have this one and a quarter inch piping that I used like I was talking about before. All you need is this, whatever leftover PVC that you have from that two foot length or the 10 foot length that you got, you need to cut out one smaller piece in order to connect your threaded fitting, which is going to tie into your barrel. So you're gonna connect that like that and then connect it to an elbow and then whatever amount of PVC you have left over will make up your overflow. So this is what your overflow assembly is going to look like. Now I'm going to be using my hole saw, which I have right here in order to cut out the hole in my rain barrel. And whenever you're using your hole saw, what you want to do is make sure that it is the same size as the threads here. It can't be too big, otherwise the threads aren't going to lock on. So get your piece of piping here that you're gonna use, your threaded connection. This is a inch and a quarter inch PVC, and this is a one and a half inch um, hole saw. And you can see how that lines up perfectly. So I'm gonna use this one and a half inch hole saw to cut this one and a quarter inch hole. If I wanted to use a three quarter inch one, I can come to my kit right here and I have a one inch that fits perfectly for my three quarter. I'm not going to be cutting an overflow into this one because I'm using this for a special application for my chickens. And you can find out exactly what I'm doing by following us on our Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube shorts. I have a really fun project that I'm gonna be using this for that is gonna be coming out in the near future. But if you wanted to attach an additional rain barrel to this right here, like I said before, what you can do is take off this elbow and replace this elbow. Of course, this is gonna give me a hard time. There we go. With a teed fitting like this. So instead of it going into the elbow, I'm gonna put my T in the bottom like this. Then I can put my valve in right here. And then I can make the exact same assembly on another rain barrel. There's no reason to have multiple valves. 
you can just use elbows on the bottom and another piece of line that goes off to another rain barrel which hooks in just like this one does here and this one valve will supply the water from all of your rain barrels so just doing this simple switch can allow you to connect multiple rain barrels together if you are going to use multiple rain barrels just make sure all of them are at the exact same level because if one is higher than the other it's going to limit the amount of water that you can actually hold inside of your system so now that we've got everything assembled, we need to test it before we finalize all these connections. All right, so we're back at our final location. And all I would recommend that you do is get your rain barrel set up, how it's gonna be set up, and make sure all of your connections. So you can see that this is a little wonky, but I have the ability to move this around and get it how I want. And this will give you a better understanding of how you can actually use the system. So if you have a watering can, grab your watering can, see if you can actually fill it up here. Make sure that your downspout will actually flow into the hole that you've made because this is the time where you can make the changes before you finalize everything. So it looks like I'm good here with my downspout going into my hole. Where my valve is, is a good space or a good spot for me to actually use the water itself and my overflow is in a good position where it's not going onto anything in the chickens like it's going to just flow down and somewhere here on the soil for your overflow you could take something like a little pot like this and put it right next to if i had my my overflow coming down right here you could take this fill it with some rocks or something just so that way it's not eroding the soil underneath and splashing things around, especially if you have plants that could cause disease. So that's just another helpful tip for you with your overflow. But now that I'm happy with the position, I'm happy with the connections, I can use this valve pretty freely. I'm ready to cement everything together and finalize the assembly. Based off of my dry fit and its final location, I wound up making a small modification, which was making this tube right here a little bit longer. So this is the supply that comes out of my barrel and goes off to the valve. The valve was right underneath here, so I could still use it pretty well, but I wanted to just make it even easier to use. Why not make it better while I can and just make this a little bit longer? So now that I've got everything finalized and you can see that I've got my tea going off to another barrel, I'm just going to take everything apart and we're going to make those final connections. And we're going to start with our vent port or our adapter port right here. You want to make sure that this connection is nice and tight. This thing is made to seal up. So what I'm going to do is grab my hammer and my screwdriver. Instead of taking it off, I'm going to be putting it back on. So lefty loosey, righty tighty. I'm just going to tap it just like that and make sure that this connection is nice and tight because you don't want any water leaking out from the bottom here. Next, I'm going to be taking my threaded connection as well as the threaded pipe tape and we're going to apply a few layers of that to our threaded portion which is going to thread into our piece itself. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you pull and get this nice and tight and wrap this around here three or four times. This is essentially acting as a gasket and is going to prevent any water from coming through that joint. Now, once we have that assembled, we're going to take this and screw it into our port for the last time. So make sure that you screw this in there really well. Once you start to feel it fighting you, that's how you know it's far enough. No water's gonna get out and you could stop right there. Now, in order to properly fit up all of these connections together, these PVC connections, they need to be clean and free of debris, like I said before. And we're going to get our PVC primer and cement and make all these connections. Now, I took off this assembly exactly how it's going to be laid out on my rain barrel and this is very important it needs to be assembled this exact same way that it came off because once you use this primer and cement it's not coming apart the only way that you're gonna be able to get this apart is to cut it and get new fittings and make a whole new assembly 
So lay yourself out a towel that you don't care about or get a bigger piece of cardboard that you can use because this stuff can stain. I'm going to go one piece at a time, take things slow, make sure that I'm doing it correctly, but the process is the same. Every single connection that I'm going to fit up with my PVC has to be primed. And this is going to help make a better connection. You can get these things together as a package at the big box store, but this purple stuff right here is primer. And I would definitely recommend doing this outside because it does have a very strong odor. So on every single one of your connections, you're going to rub this primer on the inside where those fittings are gonna be made up as well as around the PVC pieces that you're going to use. And you could fit your finger in there just like that to not touch it. Or you can wear gloves. That'll probably be the smarter option because this can, stuff can stain even your skin. As you can see, it's already done to me. So I'm just gonna work my way through all of these connections, making sure I get everything nice and cleaned and ready to go, even inside of the valve here. And that looks good. So once we're done with our primer, it's gonna dry very quickly. We're going to go ahead and get our cement and this stuff dries even quicker. So the exact same process, but we're gonna start with the piece of PVC that we're connecting. So I'm gonna rub this around here a few times. I'm gonna immediately grab my connection piece, stick it in there, press, and after a few seconds, that's rock solid. That's already, I can barely twist it anymore. You could twist it back and forth to really firm up that connection, but it's not even necessary. Just like that, you have a cemented piece. So I'm gonna do the same thing for this piece right here. Stick that in. You can see it, yeah. That's good. And then our last piece is the valve. Again, you always want to cement the PVC pipe portion of the connections, not the fittings themselves. And for me, the valve's going to be upside down. So I need to make sure that I get that into position where I want it. And there is our final assembly. I'm going to let it dry for probably about 20 to 30 minutes before I hook it up to my rain barrel and then we'll get it in its final position fill it up with water and see how it works i just finished getting the rain barrel all set up and i took my hose and put the water on the roof and got it filled up to a reasonable level and i just let the water sit in there for a little bit and checked underneath just to make sure everything is holding water and all the connections look good so i filled that up i don't know about 30 percent of the way and we gotta do the final test. Does the spigot work? And there we go, there is our water. This project I think is great for a beginner DIY project. Gives you the ability to capture fresh rainwater that you can use to provide for your chickens or water your garden. And with these simple instructions, you can easily modify this setup for multiple rain barrels, as many rain barrels as you want in order to capture as much water as you want. If you're looking to make a larger system, we've also created a system that holds over 800 gallons of rainwater with IBC totes, and you can watch it right here. But most of us, this is all we need. We put a rain barrel on each one of our gutters around the house and we'll have plenty of rainwater for our gardening needs. I hope you all enjoyed this video, learn something along the way, and make sure you like and subscribe for more amazing DIY projects and homesteading content. And I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.